Good afternoon. This is Martin Despang. Whoops. No, this isn't Martin Despang. This is Martin Despang's substitute. Martin has to teach a super duper class at uh, UH Architecture this afternoon. And he has subbed for me, so I'm subbing for him. My name is Howard Wig. I normally host Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. So you are on the Think Tech Hawaii site. And we have as our distinguished guest today, Mr. Sean Mosley, Territorial Manager for Breezeway. What in the world is Breezeway for those who are not heart and soul into the construction industry? Breezeway is a jealousy window manufacturer out of Australia, yes? Still Correct. out of Australia? Yeah. yeah. Australia is where they began. The jealousy windows that we are seeing today, not just Breezeway, but uh, competitors, are way, way, way superior to the jealousies that uh, I grew up with and any other local people grew up with. If we went to Auntie's house and Auntie wasn't in and we wanted to get in, we'd simply go around to the back. And I think even without pliers, we would just detach the louvers just a little bit, take out a few jealousy blades, crawl in, and, and we were at home at uh, Auntie's house. And we could actually reattach the louvers <laughs> with our hands. <laughs> Those were the old <laughs> louvers, believe me. You know, all technology is improving at uh, six miles a minute, well, not six miles a minute, a hundred miles a minute, and jealousy windows are no exception, as we are about to see. We're gonna see how durable they are, and they're, if not totally burglar-proof, very largely burglar-proof, and they seal very, very nicely. When you get them sealed, there's not a whole lot of air leakage, as, as was the, uh, the case. So, without further ado, let me introduce Sean Mosley. Welcome to the program. Hello, so, uh, Howard. How are you today? I am doing very, very, very excellently. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me on the show. And. Just as a B introduction, this is IECC 2015. What in the world is that? That is the energy code coming to a county near you, and it includes, this is a Hawaii-specific amendment to the national code. It includes specifically jealousy windows. Why? Because the energy code is intended to maximize energy efficiency and in many many homes that have air conditioning the the inhabitants don't use the air conditioning all the time because it's absolutely not necessary because we have a beautiful climate why not on cool days and nights turn off the ac and open up the windows what are the best windows to open up jealousy windows so we put them in and they're a huge huge uh, energy saver or maybe uh, with the given the new president we will have in a couple of months a huge energy saver so well on that very very <laughs> cheery note why don't we go to our first slide and you know sean lee i was born and raised here and that looks really really familiar yeah, what's going so, on here so yeah. this is actually a true jealousy window in the essence mm -hmm. of its form and this is what a typical jealousy from 1950 to 1970 will look like. You'll see a handle on the right that's a crank style. You'll see a white handle on the left that's a replacement. And you'll see all the clips bent. And this is actually a renovation job I took a picture of where the blades were falling out about three mm -hmm. stories and injuring cars Ooh. and possibly uh. people. Um, you know, there's a big distinction between jealousies and louvers because mm -hmm. jealousies are the old style where they both, when they're open, they, you know, they offer absolute ventilation. But when you close a jalousy, you still have air leakage, 1.2 CFM or greater. C with the CFM louver, being cubic, cubic feet, feet per minute. minute. Yeah. yeah. So with the louver, when you close it, you actually get better ceiling than you would get with your front door. So huge improvements in that. Um, the old jalousies that you saw in that slide there, they were dissimilar metals. You had zinc mm -hmm. rivets, you have aluminum frames, and then mm -hmm. when you have the electrolysis, which is created, it's an electrical reaction between mm -hmm. salt mm -hmm. and moisture, and you get to similar metals, it causes them to swell, so the rivets start popping off. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is because, like you talked about, being able to break into the house, mm 
Mm -hmm. Once you bend that aluminum, it's so thin, it never mm -hmm. bends back. So you, every time you take that blade out, you're actually destroying mm -hmm. the window. And, it's the and only and window. Again, I, I used yeah. to do it. Uh, I just gave the example of my aunt's house because yeah. sometimes she wouldn't be there and the house would be locked. And I would literally, I didn't even need a screwdriver or anything. Oh, no, it's <laughs> perfect. It's, it, it's perfect. I mean, if you're trying to escape from somewhere, it's even better. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to make a house secure, it's uh, very, very yeah, questionable yeah. because when the window's closed, you can still open it. So, the, yeah, the, that's the old style. Yeah. yeah. I have a Which, lot of people that get upset at louvers because mm -hmm. they, can, they cannot break into them when they're closed mm -hmm. without breaking the glass. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Is this the appropriate time to talk about the difference between louvers and... Yeah, or, yeah, so yeah. they both go up and down, okay? Mm -hmm. So a jalousy goes up and down, you, you lift and go up on the crank, or you crank it this way, but essentially the hardware is just going like this. A louver actually properly designed that actually the hardware will spin, and it pushes mm. the clip against the jam of the window and seals it. And what that does is it pushes the glass really tight, so instead of it just touching, it actually pushes it in. Mm. So you create a good glass-on-glass -glass contact. What you get with that is hydrostatic pressure. If you've ever taken two pieces of glass, put water between them and you try to pull it apart, you can't. I remember that. You have to yeah. slide it off. Yeah. But with the jealousy, because they don't totally tighten to each other, you never get that hydrostatic pressure. That's why if you take a hose and you spray the house down, mm -hmm. and clean the windows, grandma's going to get upset with you because mm -hmm. water's getting in the house, that's a big mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. With a louver, you can actually hose or power wash it down and everything will come down and go where it's supposed to go at. Mm -hmm. So it's really... The same concept in design, but an improvement in the style. Jalousies started back, you know, 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. and from the 50s and 70s, we have a lot of the jalousies in Hawaii, which are great when they're open because we get all the passive trade winds, we got all the natural ventilation, but once you close it and you got a storm, you're praying mm -hmm. that nothing to get damaged. And you can see with old jalousies, there's damage on the wood, on the walls. Mm -hmm. There's always seems to be an electrical outlet right under the window, single wall construction, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So. The real definition between the two based in Hawaii standards, and I will note that Breezeway is originally Australian, mm -hmm. and we still have factories in Australia and New Zealand and throughout the world, but the louvers we manufacture in Hawaii are manufactured here in Halaba and have mm. been for over seven years, and we have provided product to Hawaii for over 40-something years. Wow, but so, so, so there is a little, uh, an employment Oh, yeah, yeah, they're locally, yeah, locally yeah, made. Yeah, they're yeah, definitely yeah. locally made, mm -hmm. and we're, they're, do they're locally geared. I mean, I grew up with jealousies, and truthfully, after being in Windows myself for all oh, 28 years now, mm -hmm. I never liked jealousies as a kid or in the window industry until I came into the Breezeway family because they never performed when they were closed. Mm -hmm. So everyone just leaves them open, and that was great. Absolutely perfect. You know, I'm thinking of my house, and that's exactly what goes on. Yeah, yeah. and that's then plus exactly. my grandma would make me take every blade out and clean every one to get all the dirt out of the spots, mm -hmm. and so it operated again, and I'd have to fix all the rivets. And it was a, it was an eyesore. It felt like braces on the house. Mm -hmm. and, but the, the trade-off was that it was an affordable window, mm -hmm. and it offered full ventilation and didn't require air conditioning. Yep. So if you're leaving your window open all the time, it was fine. And that, that's the case in my house, and I suspect in the case of many of our visitors, correct our visitors, our, our audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that and that's great. But mm -hmm. there, there's a level of standard and safety. You showed the energy code. Mm -hmm. You know, as days get hotter, and whether you believe in climate warming or not is irrelevant. The fact is, when you have a hot day and it's just too hot to have, and there's no trade winds and the Kona winds are coming, mm -hmm. and you want to turn the AC on, you don't want it all going out your window. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll go to houses and see people who run AC all the time on jalousies, and they got tape mm -hmm. over every blade, mm -hmm. or they're gluing them shut. Yeah. I mean, that's an egress nightmare right there. Mm -hmm. you know? Firemen don't like that too much. Yeah. And uh, I've seen the same thing uh, on our beloved uh, public schools, the temporary yes. classrooms. They yeah. used to be jealousy cooled, now they're AC cooled. And, yeah, and yeah. They're, they're having a yeah. huge challenge with that because of all the heat abatement. They want to, mm -hmm. you know, they want to air condition when it's necessary, and that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. But when they want, you know, like my children go to public school in Kaneohe, and on hot days, they're going to run the AC where they can, when they can. On a cool day, just open it up. There's no reason for it. Mm -hmm. In fact, building occupancy health with natural ventilation and proper life cycles, mm -hmm. reduces sickness by 48%. It's a proven fact mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. If you run AC 24-7 in a scholastic environment, your absenteeism is higher. You yeah. actually have less kids showing up because they're living in recycled air, getting more mm -hmm. sick, more mm -hmm. allergies, more challenges. So the mechanical system gets more taxed. Yeah, because you, you have, we, we, we speak in terms of air exchanges. Yeah. And when 
you have openings on this side and openings on that side, you're going to get a tremendous air exchange. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And a, a bet, I mean, I grew up here. Mm -hmm. I remember loving when the windows were open and being able to see the Kotlau and Kaniwe Bay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just like, that made me want to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why don't we go to the, uh, the next slide here? Because th this is quite a s spectacular one. We go up, up, up. What in the world is all this color about here? Yeah. So this is one of our um, projects that we did. This is out of Australia. And you see different greens in the glass. So there's a lot of, with a well-built louver, there's a lot of uh, aesthetic options for architects and designers. In this case, you actually have a color splash with the grass accenting it, so it feels good when you walk into it. But that's actually a solar shade, too, for the windows behind. So you have a mm -hmm. reduction of solar heat gain, mm -hmm. and you have an open-air environment, but it's mm -hmm. completely protected from the environment for you know, bad weather and so forth. And it just has a good splash of color. So that would be obviously more of an upscale, but you can see the height of the louvers on that. That's a consistent run. And those are large blades, and it, mm -hmm. it's a testament to the quality of the hardware. You know, those blades are not going to be falling out, and you're not going to be able to remove them without knowing how to do it and pulling them out up on a, a lift there. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you can see the way it's angled in. You know, the, the, the tilt is so that it allows the air to scoop into the facade mm -hmm. and into the building, so it increases it. Obviously, green glass is not extremely common in Hawaii. It is a color that Breezeway offers because in overseas and in, in foreign markets, you know, Australia, New Zealand, and whatnot outside of Hawaii. Um, architects like to throw in the different splashes mm -hmm. of color for, mm -hmm. um, you know, to show that it's not just the same old stuff from 30, yeah. 40 I've, years I've ago. I've never seen that. Je jealousies as a mm -hmm. facade, and they, they do block the, the heat's oh, absolutely. The sun's radiation so that it doesn't transfer yep. into the building itself. And in cases of that being that open yeah. area will block the wind when it's too strong. That's actually important. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. buildings have all louvers in them. And if it's all open, people are sitting there trying to grab the paper on their desk. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you have to be able to control the directional wind flow as well. Yeah, so yeah, that it's yeah. comfortable and not, oh my goodness, shut that window, and then mm -hmm, it gets hot. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, let's take a look at the, uh, the next slide. And we, oh, this is beautiful, whatever yep. this so is. Yeah. Here's, a, here's yeah. another home, um, mm -hmm. obviously a luxury home, a little more upscale. But you can see the height of the louvers in it. It's open air. It's got natural fan ventilation for those days that are hot. There's no air conditioning whatsoever. You can see the mm -hmm. little flat screen TV and the fireplace to the right. And it's got a sliding door system. So this is really indoor outdoor living, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people try to strive for because it, this is pretty much, aside from the fan, which is very low voltage, I mean, DC, you're not chewing up a lot of energy, but you're comfortable yeah. in the home mm -hmm. and quite happy with it. Yeah, yeah I've, uh, we have uh, <coughs> ceiling fans in our new uh, energy code. Yeah. Also, ceiling plan plus great uh, cross through ventilation. Just moving a little air across the body with some yeah. evaporation, yeah. you feel great. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, really hot days <clears> is a different story, but we'll get into that, right? And yep. And on that cheery note, we need to take a break. This is not code green. This is Martin Despang Human Architecture. I believe is the name of his program. I guess Sean Mosley of Breezeway. We will be back in a minute. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, my name is Richard Emery, and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. When you think about it, about one-third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha.
Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Human Architecture. I'm sitting in for Martin Despang, and my guest is Sean Mosley, Territorial Manager for Breezeway. I'm thinking I shouldn't say Jealousy Windows, I should say Louvered Windows. That's uh, correct. Yeah. yeah, Jealousy Louvered Windows, and we made the distinction in the first part between the old jealousies that don't do so good and the new ones. And look at this, Sean, we are in the factory. We're in our factory, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, you give us a little uh, walkthrough of, of okay, what goes so on Okay, so if you look over here, right there is the raw extrusions that we bring in. Basically, everything is assembled and made to order here in our factory in Halaba. Um, you can see that there's no air conditioning. It's a high ceiling factory. The, the venting is also louvers as well and fans. Um, everything is made to order. I don't like the word custom because it makes people scared of the expense. Uh, in this case, we just every house is different in Hawaii. All the concrete structures are different, so we just cut everything to size, make them. If you've got five different size windows, we can make five different size windows. Uh, and you're just seeing the raw extrusions in the factory. Um, off to the right over there, you can see this is where they're doing the cutting of the long extrusions that we bring in. Uh, there's other, the yellow round circular guy there is the punch press where we punch the holes and the handles for everything. So from start to finish, aside from extruding the raw aluminum, everything is hand fa handcrafted and handmade here in the valley. Hmm. Uh, those guys must work uh, rather fast. Yep, yep. yep. Um, the nice part too is it means we stock all of the parts. So if something breaks, you're not waiting four weeks from the mm, mainland for good a replacement. Good point, good point, yeah. You can yeah, call us yeah. up and there's something to fix it with. And I think the next slide, we're going to get some detail about uh, how the parts go together here. Yep. Oops. Oh, so oh, we do There's, nope, there's the stronghold yep, system. Yep. So this is a, mm -hmm. a louver window that we don't recommend you try this at home. Because mm -hmm. if you were standing on this window and you had a jealousy, the glass would have broken by now into a bunch of big shards. Or as my children like to sometimes do it, they want to crawl up the glass thinking it's a ladder. Well, with our glass and the louvers, we have the stronghold where we temper the glass. And the tempering actually cooks the glass again. You have initially float glass, is which what breaks into shards. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can cut and buy from, you know, the local hardware store and fit to size. Tempered glass is cut to size and then cooked in an oven, which is hiding behind your back there, uh, which mm -hmm. you can kind of see in the orange a little bit. The tempered glass increases the strength so that the dead load weight allows up to 185 pounds. Where in a float glass, you'd have maybe 75 pounds and it'll break away on you. When it's closed, you have an impact weight of about 360 mm. pounds. So well, it actually acts as a guard. You, you know, let me interject there. Yep. In terms of uh, building codes, we're looking more and more at hurricane resistant. Correct. Uh, yeah. And because we know that it's not if, it's when it's yep. going to hit us with, with uh, global warming. Absolutely. So we're trying to ensure we know that there's going to be these objects blow, just whirring through and hitting. Yep. And the worst thing you can imagine is hitting a, say, a two by four, yep. hitting a window. Yeah. Yeah, because so all the very, glass very would important. fly yeah. and go at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, hurricane windows are not cheap. They're usually laminated mm -hmm. glass. With a louver, you can't do laminated because it's a, a round blade. But we actually have tested our louver for hurricane standards. Mm -hmm. You have three mm -hmm. elements of a hurricane standard. You have wad, water, wind, and impact. Mm -hmm. Now, if a two by four hits a tempered piece of glass, it's going to break. So there are hurricane screens that replace mm -hmm. insect mm -hmm. screens and serve the purpose of an insect screen, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. serve the purpose of hurricane and also security. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. that you have impact resistance, you have water resistance, and you have air resistance. Yep. And can achieve that while getting full ventilation like mm -hmm. a jealousy would have offered. Yeah, it's called d disaster relief, <laughs> uh, and it's coming to building codes near yeah. near us. Uh, what in the world so, is all this so about? So what you're here? seeing yeah. here is the stronghold system put together. So on the far right of the screen, you're seeing the, the hole in that blade. So what we do is we take the glass blade and we drill a hole in it first. Then we wash the blade and run it through the tempering oven. Then that blade seats inside the clip, and you see that pin that's got a little dotted line mm -hmm. that goes through the clip and through the blade and secures to the other side and then when it goes together it locks the blade in what that means is you cannot remove that blade without removing that pin mm -hmm. or breaking the glass mm -hmm. we designed this specifically for high-rise elevations because we don't want blades falling down 20 stories mm -hmm. or somebody mm -hmm. taking things out the side effect has been it's a security window in so many terms and we don't sell it as a security window but it does increase security in the home because you can't just pluck the blade out from the outside. Mm -hmm. You'd actually have to get at those pins and remove each one or break the glass at that point. 
So what you have here is a much safer window for sheer faces and elevations, first story, and so forth. It sounds like breaking the glass would be a bit of a chore. Um, it depends. Breaking tempered glass, there's different ways to do it, but it's probably mm -hmm. best not to reveal that in public. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, when you're using tempered glass and you're going to use the stronghold, if you have a requirement for egress where you need to get out in case of a fire, you would not use that window in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you wouldn't have... Part of the, re the def definition of egress is no special tools required. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's why jalousies uh, yeah. have been allowed to be used so long. If you mm -hmm. use a pin in there, you're going to have to have a tool or the mm -hmm. components to get it out. So yeah. you're going to want to make sure that if in a bedroom or somewhere where egress is required, that you're using a window that meets egress requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Safety yeah. first. Yep. Safety I, first. Uh, I sit next in the Hawaii Building Code Council. I sit next to the deputy fire chief. So yeah. Very. I don't want to mess with things. those guys. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They work yeah. hard yeah. enough, and I have many friends in the department. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what else do we have in the way of slides? This looks like a beautiful residential setting here. Yeah. So what's neat about this house is all the blades that you see are actually aluminum blades. Um, hmm. And when that house closes up, it gets very dark. But when it opens, you can see there's only one light on above the sliding door, and there's one on the picture for the artwork, but everything mm -hmm. else is naturally lit. And that whole place is breathing. I mean, so mm -hmm. much so that they close the door because there's too much air. Um, mm -hmm. The benefit of aluminum is total blackout. If you say you have an entertainment room and you want to get it mm -hmm. dark, and turn the air on and watch movies all day, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And when you open it, the aluminum actually reflects good light, so it brings mm -hmm. in sometimes more than the glass would because yep. the glass would absorb the light. And when, when they're open, there's a, that and the windows, there's something called daylighting. Correct. And as opposed to artificial lighting. Correct. And we homo sapiens are about 200,000 years old. Yep. And we didn't get artificial light until 130 years ago, but the yep. mass of people didn't get it until 70, 80 years yep. ago. So our human eyes and our DNA are completely adapted to daylight. We perform better when we perform under Correct. daylight. So you're letting that in there. Yeah. There's a, yeah. a few slides. If we can just kind of roll through a couple, I can touch on mm -hmm. what you're seeing um, in that. So over here on the top left, you have a power louver, and you have a manual louver on the right side, and that's all natural daylighting. That power louver actually integrates with the building management system where when it gets a certain temperature, it opens up and allows the heat out to keep the place cool before the air conditioning might kick in. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind going to the next slide, I can kind of show you. So here's all naturally daylight. That's an indoor pool. This house is actually up in the um, Makiki area. And you can see a lot of concern with people with pools and windows is the balustrade requirements that nobody wants to run into a window and get hurt. Well, obviously, all that glass is tempered. Tempered is often called safety glass. So, you, you know, if you get out and you slip and you fall into it, it will break into little tiny pieces like a windshield. Mm -hmm. And uh, the worst you'll get is a scratch, I would guess, but you won't have these big shards coming at you. Uh, you can see a couple lights on there around the pool, but not much. The rest is all natural. Mm -hmm. This is a full house. This one is actually in New Zealand, I believe. Uh, it could be Australia. Um, but you can see louvers all the way around. You've got tin roofs on the top. Very uh, modern, classic architecture between the two. You've got an outdoor pool. You got some balustrading for the pool rail there. Um, obviously, that house is not difficult to live in. It's probably very comfortable when you're inside, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the lighting is at minimum, and it's you know afternoon. Mm -hmm. And could we go back about uh, three slides to? Let's see, uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I want to talk about controls because the, again, the building energy code con requires controls, 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 yeah. including uh, daylighting controls. Yeah. There's a whole, again, in <laughs> this code here, there's a whole daylighting section. Yeah. And so I'm intrigued by, by that slide. And you're, you, ha you use controls to shut the windows and turn on the AC. Because if you don't have controls, People, if you have AC, people are going to turn it on right. in a school or a office there, situation. There's a lot and of just different, let it run. Yeah. There's a lot of different control types. Like right here, for example, this is our head office in uh, Australia. The windows are all tied into the building management system and the air conditioning as well. And 
you know, you have different levels of control options. Whether you want it to just control airflow and cooling or lighting, or even there's control systems that do condensation and humidity mm -hmm. based on humid, mm -hmm. you know, that factor. The level of controls is dependent on the level of engineering and design of it. Um, our basic power louver that we have a switch called the Aptivate controls the room based on temperature and timing. Mm -hmm. and we'll open and close based on that. If you want to step up into lighting and daylighting, then you're getting into a little bit more of a sophisticated system, which in a commercial mm -hmm. facility would be beneficial. Like if, uh, if you go right here, Sinclair Library uh, in, at UH, um, this is a unique place because this is a mixed mode uh, uh, library. In this case, this is the little mm -hmm. study room over there. All the windows actually on the interior are fixed. All the louvers on the exterior are solar shades and the louvers on the top are fully operational and the air conditioning system is above that lattice work. So um, should the power go out, they have air ventilation there too. And you can see all of the, the, the solar saline, uh, sorry, solar shading mm -hmm. that is uh, mm -hmm. accomplished by having those blades at the right fixed position. Interesting thing about the position is we had to find one where pigeons wouldn't roost. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Hawaii problem, of course. But you can see all in the upper part of the louvers, you can see the air conditioning ducting and the, me the mechanical systems mm -hmm. running through. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, the daylighting is all LED. This is uh, on Lanai. This is the Lanai Elementary. Mm. And you actually, this is a classic schoolroom example of a mixed mode. You can see the air conditioning system running in the middle. Mm -hmm. You have LED solar tubes down the center. And then you have louvers on the sides with security windows on the outside for hurricane impact and so forth. Mm. So you have a secure facility, naturally ventilated facility, and one, if it gets too hot, can be cooled down. And it's got a very low electrical load um, on the building. We've yeah. actually found with stuff like that, you, your electrical load usually goes down 40 to 50 percent. And again, if the AC is controlled yeah. by, by sensors and so Yeah, forth. the two work. I mean, yeah. you, you set the benchmark <clears throat> of humidity or you set the benchmark mm -hmm. of temperature and you say, okay, now the window opens first and the AC mm -hmm. cell goes and then it cools the room down so the AC works less hard and the compressor works less hard, reducing the energy load. It may still be running, but the ventilation's mm -hmm. not going out versus being stuck inside and the AC having to process the heat as yep. well. Yep, yep. And on that very, very cheery note and that extremely energy efficient note, yep. we are already at our close. This mm -hmm. is Martin Despang substitute Howard Wig for Humane Architecture with my guest, Sean Mosley, uh, Territorial Manager of Breezeway. Thank you so much for being with us, Sean. Thank you for having me, Howard. I appreciate it. And thank you, Martin. Mm -hmm.